Bitcoin, the Internet Magic Money, a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network of digital cash, changing and shaping the world as we know it. No one can stop it and no one can censor it. It has no border and no central authority. Anyone in the world can transact with Bitcoin, no matter where you live, what gender you are, what skin color you have. The protocol doesn't make any difference. And the reason it's so fascinating is because it isn't what it appears to be at first glance. Bitcoin isn't money. The blockchain isn't a system of currency. It is a platform of trust. It's not a company. It's not a product. It's not a service you sign up for. It's not a currency. Currency is just the first application. It is the concept of decentralization applied to the human communication of value. 20 years ago, if somebody told me that in the near future we can send, receive, spend and store money in a phone or a computer, I would have laughed. And yet, this technology is there to serve us. For the first time in human history, the average people can get involved with the process of creating money, taking their power back from governments and central banks, thanks to Bitcoin and blockchain technology. Well, uh, for a long time, you were a skeptic of Bitcoin and some cryptocurrencies, but you recently appear to have changed your mind about that. What happened? Well, COVID happened and the great monetary inflation happened, and that made me begin to think about how do you want to be positioned in your portfolio going forward? So that's really what tripped my interest in, in Bitcoin. Um, and you have to realize, if you just think about, say, Bitcoin versus cash, right? Bitcoin, when I think of stores of value, I think of it four ways. Purchasing power, trustworthiness, liquidity, and portability. That, that's kind of the, the categories I put it in. So when it comes to when it comes to trustworthiness, Bitcoin's 11 years old. There's very little trust in it. We're watching the birthing of a store of value, and whether that succeeds or not, only time will tell. Uh, what I do know is that every day that goes by and Bitcoin survives, the trust in it will go up. Uh, if you take cash, on the other hand, and you think about it from a purchasing power standpoint. If you own cash in the world today, you know your central bank has an avowed goal of depreciating its value 2% per year. So you have, in essence, a wasting asset in your hands. So uh, Bitcoin, I think it's a, a great speculation. Uh, I've got uh, something between one and I think just over just over one percent of my assets in Bitcoin, uh, maybe it's almost two. Uh, that seems like the right number right now. Uh, right. It's not for me. It's not the greatest. It's not the you know the great cure for the for all the monetary ills, et cetera. It's a great speculation. That's what I would say. Bitcoin is right. Paul, do you do you see this though in relation? I'm thinking about tech stocks now. Because one of the things we have seen even the, over the past two months is just the move towards virtual. Anything that can be done virtually has had great success, whether it be Zoom or any of the big tech companies in the Valley, because we're all able to do that virtually. Is that the way you see Bitcoin? And, and separately, do you own gold? I was going to ask at the same time. I have assets in gold also. I think gold can go substantially higher. Um, and yes, the digitization of the world clearly benefits Bitcoin. I mean, what we wouldn't even be talking about Bitcoin if we weren't if we weren't seeing uh, first cousins like Venmo and a variety of other ways. My children don't even carry cash. They don't even, they barely even know what cash is. So we're clearly digitizing the global economies. You've seen some countries do it explicitly, like India. 
You're seeing other countries on the way to do it, like China. So we're getting in an increasingly digitized world, and Bitcoin will be that much more accessible by that universe of people that could uh, own it as a store of value. When you think about every bull market, every single bull market has one common thread, an ever-expanding universe of people who own it. So there's probably the estimates are between 55 and 70 million people own Bitcoin. We really, if you're buying Bitcoin, your bet is that number is going to go to 120 million or to 200 million. And it's kind of hard when you look around and you see that the world's becoming increasingly digitized, not to think that the preponderance of evidence at this point in time doesn't point in that direction. But again, I am... When I think of Bitcoin, I look at it as one tiny part of a portfolio. Uh, it may end up being the best performer of all of them. I kind of think it might be, but uh, I'm very conservative. I'm going to keep a tiny uh, percent of my assets in it, and that's it. Bitcoin has proven over time, with no doubt, that it is the best performing asset of all time. A real store of value, which can be traded, produced, and used as a medium of exchange. My curiosity led me to study the history of the Bitcoin chart with a different approach. I wanted to know why Bitcoin is always going up. What are the real reasons behind its growth? After years of studying the Bitcoin chart and other related events, I think I found the smoking gun. The trigger to $600,000 per unit of Bitcoin. I am convinced and I strongly believe that Bitcoin will reach $600,000 in the near future. There are many combined reasons which will lead the price of Bitcoin to go to the moon. The first reason is this piece of code known as the halving event. Every 210,000 blocks mined or about every four years the reward given to Bitcoin miners for processing transactions is cut in half. Meaning that the supply of new Bitcoin released into circulation is decreasing each four years, making it a deflationary asset. The supply of Bitcoin is determined algorithmically based on a geometrically declining supply function. Meaning that, in the beginning, every 10 minutes, 50 new Bitcoin are created. So every block, the heartbeat, 10 minutes, created 50 new Bitcoin. This Bitcoin is used as a reward in a game theory-based security model that ensures that every transaction is independently validated by completely anonymous actors who have to stake electricity as a guarantee of the security work they have done. And if they succeed in doing the security work of validating transactions correctly, they earn as a reward based on a probabilistic return, that reward. 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. That's how currency is introduced into the economy. Every four years, it gets cut in half. 50 to 25 in November of 2012. And this year, in July, this past July, we had our second halving event, which was celebrated with birthday parties all over the world. And Bitcoin's reward went from 25 to 12 and a half. Bitcoin. As a system, it is designed to have a monetary policy that is purposely deflationary and simulates the issuance of precious metals. It gets harder and harder and harder to mine gold at greater and greater and greater cost. And Bitcoin is the same. The idea being that less and less is issued over time. If you follow that geometric curve, at some point you reach the end. In the year 2141, Bitcoin is no longer issued. 21 million coins is the asymptotic cap. It will never reach 21 million coins. That is part of the protocol. It is an unchangeable part of the protocol. and It is a rule enforced by every system that participates in the Bitcoin network. Surprisingly, the Bitcoin chart responds immediately after this event. After the first halving on November 2012, the price of Bitcoin was about $10. Almost a year after that, on December 2013, the price of Bitcoin went up to $1,100, which was at the time 107x profit. 
The second halving on July 2016, the price of Bitcoin was about $650. More than a year later, on December 2017, the price of Bitcoin went to the moon, almost $20,000 per Bitcoin, which was a gain of 30x. The average between the two pumps is 68.5x and the calculation was made like this. The third halving occurred on May 2020 and the price of Bitcoin was about $8,600. If we take the average profit, which is 68.5x, and we multiply the price of Bitcoin just after the third halving, we got this number, $589,100. I thought, that's interesting. What if I ask other people what they think about this Bitcoin price prediction? So I have conducted a pool on my social networks and I said, do you think that the Bitcoin price will be less than $100,000 or the price will be between $100,000 and $300,000 or between $300,000? and $600,000. 45% of the people which have answered to the pool think that Bitcoin will never reach $100,000. 36% think that the price of Bitcoin will be between $100,000 and $300,000. And 19% think that Bitcoin can reach $600,000. Bitcoin has already created a lot of wealth and made a lot of people rich overnight. It is not surprising at all that we see the same scenario repeating itself, giving the chance to the most deprived people in our society to rise and shine. After all, that's why Bitcoin was conceived in the first place, to give power to the people and fight this corrupt system. Let me know what's your thoughts about this subject. Will Bitcoin reach $100,000 or $200,000? or $300,000 or $600,000. Leave me your comment below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to support it, join me on Patreon so I can push more content like this. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay peace. Ciao.